What is going on YouTube? Bryce builds it all, your favorite AMPIA and part 147 instructor. And last week I pissed off all of the mechanics and this week I am going to piss off all of the pilots. Now I really hope that is an exaggeration, but last week I did a video about owner assist annuals and the benefits, the pros of doing an owner assist annual. And now this week I'm gonna talk about why I simply will refuse to do an owner assist annual. So if that interests you, stick around. Now I'm going to preface this by saying that if you haven't watched my other video on that, you don't really need to, you can watch this one first, but go and watch that video. Give it, give it a view, if you will. I discussed the benefits, like I said, of an owner doing an owner assist annual. And I talked about, you know, getting to know your airplane a little bit better, being involved in the maintenance process, learning more about your airplane and so on and so forth. But in this video, I'm going to play the devil's advocate as a mechanic and discuss why I simply will refuse to do an owner assist annual. Now, one more preface there, y'all obviously know me and from my channel that I have done several owner assist annuals. They are something that I am willing to do under certain circumstances, but the truth as to why so many shops will not do them. And I did give one reason in the last video, which was that sometimes it comes down to insurance and liability. I know at the FBO that I used to work at, they had an, it, it was written in the insurance policy that owners and students of the flight school were not allowed to be in the hangar performing any sort of maintenance or work. Now they could be in the hangar to pull an airplane out. They could be in the hangar uh, for like a show and tell, but they weren't allowed to be in the hangar doing work. So for that reason, we couldn't allow owner assist annuals. Um, and that's, that's honestly one big reason, but I think there is another reason that you need to consider. And this actually comes down to just the mechanic themselves. I know plenty of mechanics who will not do uh, owner assist annuals because of horror stories. And the easiest way I could describe horror stories is things like this. I know a guy, or I should say I happen to be at a shop where once upon a time, an owner had a nasty habit of working on his own airplane. Now, I don't mind if an owner does his own oil changes. I don't mind if an owner's changing his own tires, things that are allowed under the regulation. But what this owner was doing was messing with things that were out of his wheelhouse, if you will. And then he would bring us the airplane and say, it's broken and I think it's something y'all did, so you need to fix it. And this happened several times. And it just so happened that one day, I was over at his hangar pulling the airplane out because it was not running, it was completely dead. It would crank, it just wouldn't start. And I was pulling the airplane out of the hangar, I was taking it over to our hangar, and I looked down on a, on a cart that's full of cleaning supplies, and I see a Bendix Magneto rebuild kit, and I see a plastic gear laying there, and I see a capacitor laying there, and you know some other little stuff, and I'm like, hmm. He's bringing it to us, because he's having a hard starting issue, the engine won't start, and he thinks it's magneto related and it's something we did. And this was one of those things where I think the owner would get his hands in the airplane, he would, he would get a little bit too involved or over his head. Obviously he wasn't logging these things, he was doing maintenance and he wasn't putting that maintenance in the records because he's not allowed to as an owner. And it just got to a point where finally my boss was like, listen man, we, we can't work on your airplane anymore because every time we do an annual, every time we do an inspection, every time we do any sort of work to it, you bring it back to us the next day or, or a couple days after with something broken and claim that it was our fault and then we find the parts in your hangar and that's simply not going to work for us. Another reason that I won't necessarily do an owner assist annual, and this could go for many shops, is that I don't know you as the owner. Now, if you're a good friend of mine, if you're someone that I've been around for many years or you're someone who's I've worked with in the past, that might be a different story. I might know you, but if you are a stranger off of the street and we've never met before, I don't know your mechanical aptitude. I don't know how good you are behind a wrench and I don't know how good you're going to be at maintenance. So what that means is when it does come time to do the annual and I ask you to take all the panels off or I ask you to uh, you know, take the wheel off and get the bearings out of it so that I can look at the bearings and you're like, oh, I don't know how to take the wheel off. Well, then you're not really assisting in the annual. You're sort of just hanging out. Yes, that was a wasp that just flew behind me. It landed on my knee, which was uh, a bit disturbing. But anyways, besides the point. Um, and without knowing somebody's mechanical ability, you could be a fantastic mechanic. You could be an incredible mechanic, but I don't know that because I don't know you. And it's hard, it's really, really hard to trust someone that you don't know to get their hands in and on, on an airplane that I am going to be certifying as 
airworthy. The owner's not certifying it as airworthy. The owner's not inspecting it. I'm doing that. And that is my responsibility to make sure that everything is done right. And you don't want an owner in there tinkering on things that he's not supposed to be messing with. Uh, and this is both a cautionary tale for mechanics and also for owners. If you are an owner, aircraft owner and you want to be involved in your maintenance, even if it's some nominal task, like having an assist step re-chromed or you want to pull something off and have it powder coated, I don't care what it is, talk to the mechanic first. Because if the mechanic finds out the day of the annual as you're taking it apart to go get this done, it's a really good way to piss somebody off. So just make sure that before you pull anything off or before you decide that you want to do some sort of restoration project on your airplane, that your, own, or that your mechanic knows about it and is not going into this to discover it at the last possible second. I would now like to talk about a realistic expectation of the tasks that most IAs that allow owner assist annuals are going to give you as the aircraft owner. These are the things that I would ask you to do. And it's very important to understand this. I had somebody counsel me in the comments on the last video because they assumed things and then got mad about it. And they assumed that I was saying that I want the owner to do the inspection and that I was going to sign it off. And that is not at all the case. So. As the IA, I cannot delegate any portion of the inspection. I cannot delegate even the ADs. Like I have to do every single piece of the inspection. So if you are doing the inspection with me as the owner, the kinds of tasks that I'm going to be giving you can most like or can most easily be summed up as grunt work. You will be pulling the panels off the wing. You will be pulling the interior out. You will be thoroughly cleaning the aircraft. I might even have you drain the oil. You will be jacking the wheel or jacking the landing gear and pulling the wheel bearings out and cleaning all the grease out of them. Now, like I said, I have to inspect the bearings for corrosion before it all goes back together. So I will put my flashlight in there and I will get a look at everything before I say, okay, yeah, you're good to reassemble it. And I will make sure that all the grease and everything is packed in correctly before I reassemble it. But you will be getting what is what I like to call the grunt work, the grunt work tasks, the things that I just, I don't want to do because I did them for five, six years as an AMP before I was an IA. Those are the kinds of things that I'm going to make you do as the owner assisting on an annual inspection. I am not going to let you climb into the tail and inspect all the cables and tell me if the cables are okay. I need to make that determination on my own. I also need to make sure that the aircraft is airworthy and you're not trying to hide anything. I say that as respectfully as possible. I have had owners try to pull the wool over my eyes in the past and cover something up or strategically not take a certain panel off because they didn't want me to know that you know, a nut plate was broken or that there was a crack somewhere. And then I found whatever it was and said, hey, we have to fix this. Last thing I'm gonna talk about in this video really is cost savings. If you are an owner and you are wanting to do an owner assist annual with me or anybody else, I'm going to caution you and let you know that it is not going to be any cheaper for you. If anything, it is going to be more expensive. And the reason that it is going to be more expensive is because you are actually, for the most part, just going to be in the way. I can have you do grunt work, I can have you pull the panels and clean the aircraft and all that kind of stuff, uh, but on certain tasks, you're just going to be in the way of me trying to get in there and get the inspection done. Many times as a mechanic, all I want to do is put my headphones in, listen to some really loud, obnoxious, offensive music, and just focus on the task at hand and burn through the annual as, as, as efficiently as I can, finding as many things wrong as I can. For me, it's almost like a Where's Waldo of finding discrepancies. Hey, this little screw is corroded. Hey, there's a little crack here. I love it. I love finding discrepancies and not everything is air unairworthy. But when I'm by myself in the hangar or when I'm with another, with another aircraft mechanic in the hangar, I can focus on those things without the distraction of the owner in the hangar and really just make sure that everything is cherry on top, perfect, and not have somebody they're asking questions, not somebody ha there slowing me down. I can really just grind through it and get it done as quickly and efficiently as possible, but also the right way. So there you go, everyone. I hope this video was entertaining, helpful, whatever it may be. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you. I've been sitting in this hangar talking for at least 
30 minutes to this camera, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna edit out or what I'm gonna include. I said so many things and I really wanna keep it in my typical 10 to 15 minute video. So if you did find this uh, helpful, make sure you go and watch the other video. I'll link it at the very end of this video in the, in the title page or whatever. Um, but if you found this video entertaining, make sure you leave me a like, leave me a comment, be respectful. I don't know why some people feel the need to be uh, a turd burglar in the comments, but they do. Uh, you know, leave me a comment, all that good stuff. Uh, what else? Follow me on Instagram, join the Discord, uh, go build something, and be easy.